Hey, this is a uh, Kiku here, like a cool man. Uh, this is a response to I'm the Pod, and uh, I'm trying to get as many videos as I can today because I'm probably gonna stay home today. It's Saturday, and I have Monday off, so I can always hang out Monday. And I was gone all yesterday, so I thought I should do some video responses. And I'm the Pod is a user, one of my subscribers, I believe, who asked uh, me three questions in a video named Kid Guru, please help. And I would love to help you guys, so uh, if you guys have any help videos or anything response, ne response needed, let me know. Email me here on YouTube or kidgurucenter at gmail.com or kidgurucenter at yahoo.com. Either one's fine. But anyways, he asked uh, three questions. First off was, I believe, oh, uh, it was Linux, the operating system. It's, uh, it's an, I guess you can call it, he called it a program, but basically it's an, op it's an operating system in OS because it operates, you know, Whole thing. He said, "What's better, Windows or Linux?" Now, um, uh, there's going to be some, you know, differentiates because between the here and there, because you know, there's Linux people and then there's, you have Windows. Granted, you know, Mac OS 10, I would highly probably choose over Windows, but you know, Ubuntu over Windows. I don't, I'm, or like Linux gen in general. Linux, the thing, good thing, it's open source. You know, they're all, they're all free operating systems. You know, they're distributions. They have way more variety than Windows. You can get barrel. You can get like you know. It depends on what your style is. If you want you know graphic, you know all the visualization. You can get barrel. Like I said, uh, there's also uh, what is it? Uh, Sabion. Sabion. You can get uh, Ubuntu if you want to get close. That's one of the closest ones they have to uh, Ubuntu. Is probably the closest they have to Mac OS 10 operating system wise. And of course, if you want to stay modern Windows, you have XP and Vista. You know, Vista hasn't seen SP1 yet, but it's, uh, in terms, you know, it wasn't a huge launch, you know, it wasn't really new, huge features, like how Leopard, when they released that, you know, but, you know, other than Arrow and all that stuff, uh, XP, I still love XP, you know, it's a great, great operating system, I'm upgrading to XP Pro soon, so in terms of best operating systems, depending on your needs of the machine, if you're a power user, um, you could just, I would say, you can dual boot uh, Linux and Windows. Or would, you know, if you have a good uh, hard drive, just partition like half your hard drive for Linux, or not even half if you don't need to, or just partition part of it for Linux. I would recommend starting off with Ubuntu, because that's what I have. Burn it to a live CD like I have here. You can, any CDR, whatever, you just basically get the ISO image. I have a tutorial on it, actually. You get the ISO image. Burn it to the CD, and then you just pop it in your computer, and boot, and you can dual boot. You know, using just pop the CD out, restart, the, turn off the computer, pop the CD out, and you boot into Windows. And if you have a majority of hard drives, basically, I'm pretty sure you're using a desktop, so you know that'd be a great way. But uh, it really depends, because Linux is built on a, a very, very popular Unix kernel, very, very high security, and a lot of you know applications, a lot of third-party applications that were you know hand-selected, Firefox, all that stuff. And then again, you have all those, you know, specifically designed Linux apps, which are really, you know, unique apps that you can get free. So, if you're all for open source and free, you know, stuff like that, Linux is a good way to go. And if you really need more hardcore, you know, like more base stuff, as in, like, you can always get like uh, uh, Open Office. I'm pretty sure it works on Linux. But if you need like, uh, you know, Microsoft Excel sheets and all that stuff and you do need all those heavy stuff, for, then, you know, just stick with, like, a Windows XP Pro or something like that. And I'm pretty sure gaming, if you're gaming, XP Pro as well would be, you know, fine, or XP in general. Uh, but, you know, it really depends on the pod, if, you know, what, what you're into, but I would recommend basically just dual booting if you're trying to decide. But anyways, uh, check out my tutorial on how to install Ubuntu if you want to learn how. Uh, live CD way it's free, so that's good. Okay, next question he had was, he wants to hook up this... PS2 to his, uh, he said his, um, Ireland, 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 I'm pretty sure, uh, wa router, or ISP, whatever. Well, your router, of course, you have your ether, you have your ethernet ports, you have your WAN port, or whatever, and then you have your, all, your other ports for ethernet, stuff like that. And, basically, if you have, you know, the regular PS2 like I do, you just get the network adapter, it's like 20 bucks probably, if you're cheaper. It's called a network adapter. I'm pretty sure you plug it in in the back of your PS2. You basically unscrew the expansion slot. I'm pretty sure it's what it's called. You put it in. So I used to be, you know, huge with PS2s. I still play mine. Mine's a modded PS2. You just put in the this little block. It's like a block this big. Put it in. Screw the screws in. It has two ports for network and I think I won't say Ethernet, but I'm not sure. But you just uh, I use a Cat5 wire. I'm pretty sure. Let's see. I think I have the wire here. Uh, 
See, yeah, I do. Okay, this is the one I use which I have in my PS2. It is Cat5, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. This wire, you just, I just plug this in the back of my PS, uh, PS2 network adapter. Make sure you know it fits. I would believe you just go with the Cat5 into the other port, not, not the network port. Just see whatever the Cat5 would fit in, because one's bigger, one port's bigger than the other. So basically, just plug it in and plug it the other end in the back of your router and set up your PS2 network configuration, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, at first it was really hard for me, but I got it set. When you get the Cat5, when you have the right wire, it works great. I'm pretty sure the Cat5 would work great, so, um, so yeah, just go to your local store and get pick up a Cat5 and pick up a, you know, wherever you get your PS2 accessories, get a network adapter and plug it in the back, and for all purposes, it should work good, just, you know, the rest will be setting it up with your ISP and everything, your settings. And his last question was Nintendo DS and the Irish router. Now, I'm not really a handheld, I don't really handheld game, I usually game indoors, not really, you know, on the go. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure the Nintendo DS is set on Wi-Fi, so really, on the party, you just have to find your uh, access point, which will be your router. If it has a password, you know, type in your passphrase and everything, and you know, just connect wi wirelessly. Pretty sure it's simple as that. Uh, but if not, you know, Google search it. Google has, you know, probably way more things, even YouTube videos. And you know, I'm not really positive, but I'm pretty sure you just connect using Wi-Fi. But anyways. Uh, those are his three questions, and I hope it helped you out. If you guys got questions, please feel free to ask me. I love doing tech support, and soon I'll be even starting a live tech support where you can call me in via Skype. So if you have a Skype account, you can call me in via Skype, ask me a question, or even on the Ustream, ask me a question live, and I'll try my best to record it if I think the question's, you know, good. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed, and I'm the pod. I hope that sorts out. If not, you know, email me. Anyways, thanks for watching.